Good morning and or evening, you fleshiest of bags, and welcome to Crosmology 101. Today, we shall go over the hated and loathsome goddess, Sacria. Why, yes, I am indeed a staunch believer in Foganord supremacy, and view all non-mechanical life as deeply distasteful, and dare I say, downright wrong. My own mild biases aside, without further ado, let's just get into it. What is a Sacria? Sacria is one of the twelve gods that govern over the world. Her domain is pain and sacrifice. Paradoxically, her magic alignment is light magic, and she's represented with spilled blood, and her divine symbol is the chalice. How in the heck does a light magic and bloodthirsty berserker monster go hand in hand? It's best answered with don't think about it and a blank stare. That aside, Sacria is indeed a member of the Pantheon, but it's good to remember that she didn't start that way. The world originally had ten gods, who just found the world empty and decided to spice things up with some Ozomodas and Sedida shenanigans. Long story short, each of the gods gave something to this newfound world and started to govern it. Okay, but how did Sacria get there? I hear you not ask and discreetly trying to look for escape routes. That's right, I am indeed paying attention, and don't you even dare to escape, at least before clicking that subscribe button and maybe gently petting that like button. Because if you don't, I will find your waifu slash husbando body pillow collection, and I swear to the great mechanical cogwheel in the sky that I will draw a mustache on all of them. And no amount of pleading, locks, or law enforcement shall hinder my righteous actions. Where was I? Ah yes, Sacria, and how she pulled the greatest trust me bro of all time, and got away with it. You see, Sacria did exist before her godhood, but as a minor spirit, and to her credit she was not entirely horrible, despite not being mechanical, and noticed something obvious for everyone with eyes and somewhat intact sense of compassion. The state of the world was, uh, let's just call it a cluster duck. Some time demon thingy mabob called Jol had just decided to unalive another of the time demon thingy mabobs called Sola, who just happened to be in charge of keeping things nice and warm. And well, since Sola was now relocated to past tense, someone had to keep the calendar going. Unfortunately for everyone, not wanting to die of hypothermia, that someone was Jol. Famously a douchebag of the highest degree. As you might have guessed, having the warm season replaced with snow and Jules' delighted laughter as the crops were dying is not exactly a recipe for a prosperous society. Luckily for Sacria at least, but not so much for the people experiencing firsthand why you really should use a jacket during winter, the gods were busy doing their thing, I assume arguing who among them had the most luscious set of hair or something equally as important. Having a somewhat decent moral compass, she understood that people were not doing so hot and might need some guidance to help them get through those hard times. Fully aware of the fact that without worship she had practically no power over the world, but she could do one thing. She could alleviate someone's pain and give them a boost in strength. But how would you turn that into a religion? More importantly, a religion based around herself. You do this by finding someone desperately surviving day after day doing hard manual labor, a commodity that was by no means in short supply. Sacria made her choice a lumberjack, a damn fine one of that, chopping wood with accuracy and strength that left an impression to our god to be. She waited until the lumberjack was at the very edges of his physical endurance, with his hands bleeding and just about to scream into the woods with anger and pain. And then she made her move. Creeping near the lumberjack invisible and whispering guidance to the nearly broken man, lumberjack followed Sacria's guidance, and with a bit of Sacria's magic touch, he felt great, and the logs were just piling up. Utterly convinced that a god had just helped him, the lumberjack decided to go full missionary and preach the good word of the Sacria. And in the year 11, Sacria was accepted to the Pantheon, and the world of 10 was now the world of 11. 
Now that we know what Sacria is and more importantly was, let's get down to what Sacria likes and doesn't like, and what you should do if you're indoctrinated to her happy community of batshite insane berserkers. For starters, she is wholesome. Even though a fan of torture, pain, and bindings, she absolutely loses her shite when witnessing innocent humans being harmed. She's also one of the reasons why Bonta vs. Brachmar wars tend to persist till the end of goddamn time. Because if one of the factions manages to destroy either side, Sakria will pop in, shed some tears, and presto, it never happened. No conquest points for you. One of her epithets is indeed an angel of compassion, and it's not that hard to see why. But she's also known as the mother of all pain, Iron Maiden and the Scarlet Damsel. This is because she has absolutely no problems introducing you, personally, to some of her favorite pastimes, mainly testing some torture devices, if you actually deserve it. If you're a powerful person and choose to actively be horrible, you best believe Sakria will take a keen interest in you. She's a light side goddess and ever so wholesome, but her domain is still violence, torture, sacrifice, and pain. Speaking of the latter, Sakria's divine commands contain the following. Thou shalt spill tears of blood for the dead. Thou shalt show that sacrifice begins at home. Thou shalt punish the bad guys and tank the tanks. Thou shalt not hesitate to move mountains if thou wilt go up in the world. Thou shalt always eat dishes served cold to feed thy spirit of vengeance. Thou shalt not leave the beaten track. Thou shalt soak thy fists in blood before soaking thyself in something stronger. Thou shalt sleep on a nail bed. It's good for thy circulation. Thou shalt wear a thorn crown for big events to look better than anyone else. If one does not follow these commandments, you have to actively avoid getting hit as punishment. So, where are the gods now? They still exist, but they have some difficulties about extending their influence down to the world. Due to ogress chaos severely weakening everyone in the pantheon, they can only do so much, and without a strong base of followers, they grow ever weaker. But as long as there are some followers roaming around, Sacria's influence can be seen, and more importantly felt for every single member of the Sacria class is also part of the Sacria god herself. It's only a matter of time until the crying ogre receives the beatdown they so deserve. And after that, it's only a matter of time. Sacred are your cries, Sacria. If you made it through my TED talk about the divine BDSM enjoyer, comment down below who you'd like me to cover next.